What's up, my mathletes? That's right, Mr. Muscarella coming at you. And in this fourth and final installment, we will figure out graphing absolute value equations and inequalities. So here we are, let's go. By now, you should have seen parts one, parts two, and part three. So let's go with part four. Now, part four, there's gonna be some very similar characteristics of our graph. All right, when we graph it. So the H and K is going to come at us the same way. And remember, this value right here, that H value, we have to remember to switch that sign. So our H value is going to be positive one. The K value, that guy is gonna stay the same, so that is just negative two. So we put those two values together, one and negative two, and that is going to be our vertex. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna find that spot, one, negative two. I'm gonna switch colors here just so you can see that a little better. So one, negative two, is going to be right there. So I'm gonna put a dot right there and maybe even draw the AOS to just kind of show your symmetry right there. So you can do that vertical line. Now the opening is going to be up or down just like it was before. So I'm gonna analyze the A value right here. And that A value has a value of negative one half, which means I'm going to open down. All right, so that's gonna be the general shape of that. So that's gonna be two things that will come from the A value. And remember, that means our slopes you know, our slopes will have two of them. One will be negative one half and one will be positive one half. When I go to graph that, I'll just use, use the dots. And here's the piece that I want to take a look at. So when we have an inequality, I want you to write this little chart down here. The inequality is going to deal with these types of symbols, either less than or greater than. Or you can have the inequalities that have the little bar under it, which means less than equal to or greater than equal to. When you have that, that's going to impact the way that we do both drawing the lines as well as the shading. So when we have an inequality that's like the left, where it's either less than or greater than, that could be one where we've got a dashed line that looks like this, or maybe we get one that looks like this. It's just gonna be dashed, all right? So dashed lines, so instead of maybe drawing that, you could actually just write the word dashed, or if you wanna write, do a similar thing, when we do these, you could either have, uh, when you have less than equal to or greater than, you could have this kind of drawing or this kind of drawing, but you're gonna have solid lines. So however you wanna notate there, make sure you, you do that. So the symbols are going to dictate whether that line that we draw is gonna be solid or dashed line. So from here, I'm gonna move around using my slopes, right? My two slopes. So I'm gonna go down one, over to the left two, down one, over to the left two, down one, over to the left two. That's the left side. And then the right side, I go down one from the vertex. So we start from the vertex, go to the right two, and down one to the right two. And that will be that piece of it right there. From here, I have to analyze my symbol, right? My symbol, so when I go back up here to this part, look at my symbol, I've got a less than symbol. So that less than symbol, that is less than. So when I have that less than, so since that symbol is less than, that means when I connect those dots, I'm going to do so using a dashed line. So I'm gonna dash line right there and dash line right there. So those are two things that we have to make sure that we do. Let's draw our dots and then do the dash line. Now, the other thing I gotta figure out is which way do I shade? Which way do I shade? So what I want you to do is open up Desmos. I want you to look at a pattern here and I'm gonna show you how to put this in. So this absolute value inequality is what we're gonna type into Desmos. And I want you to notice a pattern here and then we're gonna fill in another piece of it when it has to do with the shading. So in Desmos, which you will have opened up, we're gonna type in, so the first thing you're gonna do is put in that vertex, you're gonna label that. So one comma negative two, and you're gonna check that box that says label and vertex. And notice it's kind of hanging out there with that. And then for the next piece, we're gonna type in the absolute value inequality, which was y is less than. So we have y is less than. Now, the pieces that we're gonna put in, first that a value, so we had negative one over two, which was really nice. And notice it's starting to shade and the line is dashed. So that's something that we wanted to make sure that we got right. Now the next thing, the absolute value bars, that symbol, when you hit the keyboard, you'll notice right above the ABC down here on the bottom, you've got the absolute value symbol. So you just type that in or press that. From there, you'll do X minus one, and then arrow to the right of that. And then we put in our minus two. And notice, then we'll, close, we'll lower our keyboard and notice which part is shaded. That's beneath, that is beneath. So I'm gonna go back here and then on this part, I have to shade this piece all the way underneath that. 
all the way underneath that. So that was that one piece right there. We're gonna kind of take a look at this shading part. So when it was this symbol, it was underneath. All right, now let's take a look at what happens if we were to switch that symbol to the other side and notice that's gonna come into play here in example number four. So go ahead and fill out all the information you can. See if you can graph number four and then we'll take a look at that together. So on this one, our vertex is gonna be negative two, negative three. So again, let's go ahead and plot that dot. So negative two and then down negative three, put a dot right there. And I can even draw my AOS right there. Boom, boom. And then the opening. So when I look at this one, my A value is one third, right? So that's one third, which means my two slopes are gonna be positive and negative one third. So negative one third, positive one third. Those are my two slopes, but this without A value is positive. So that means that's gonna open up. So I know that. So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my slopes of one third and negative one third. So I'm gonna go up one to the right, one, two, three, over this way. And up one, or to, that was to the left. Up one to the right, one, two, three. Up one over one, two, three. And that's all I can fit on there. So now with this one, I got to figure out, all right, solid line or dashed line. So since this symbol right here is going to be the greater than or equal to symbol, that symbol means I'm going to have a solid line. So when I go to connect those dots, I'm going to make sure that I do so with a solid line. Now, the only thing that's different, right, I got to figure out, do I shade above it or below it? So again, we're going to put this into... Desmos. So go ahead and we're going to put this into Desmos and I'll show you how to do the less than equal to sign. There's two ways to do that. So again, when we're in Desmos, put that vertex in first, negative two, comma three, or comma negative three. Right? So that's my vertex right there. So I want to make sure that I have that and you label that in negative two, negative three. And from there, once we get to that spot, then we're going to go ahead and type in the absolute value inequality. So you're gonna start with Y, and then there's two ways to do this. There's two ways to do this. One is to do, hit the less than key on your keyboard, followed by the equal key, and notice that'll change it. That's option number one. The other option is to hit the uh, keyboard icon, and from there, you'll see the less than equal to symbol in there. So either way, you get there. And then from that spot, we'll type in our one third because that was our A value. So one third. And notice the line is solid. And we also are shading below this for right now. Um, and then we've got the absolute value. So that's that little absolute value bar. And then X plus two. And then move the cursor to the side to the right one and then do minus three. Now, notice this is shading below and look at the symbol. Now the symbol, I actually wrote that down incorrectly because I wanted you to notice something. When you have less than equal to, it is below. The shading is below. When you have the function is greater than or equal to, uh, that is when you have the shading goes above. So those are a couple of things to notice as you go through these pieces. So we go back to our function here and then we're just gonna shade all the bits that are above this line. So anything in here would be a solution. Any point that you pick in there would be a, a solution. So the shading, if it's less than, or maybe you have less than, e ooh, that, thank you, one note, that was kind of funky, less than equal to, that's when you're gonna shade underneath. Now if you have greater than or greater than equal to, that's when you're gonna shade over. So those are gonna be a couple of things with the shading that you're going to want to make sure. So you're gonna shade over or under, depending on the inequality symbol that you're presented with. Now the last thing, let's go ahead and talk about the transformations based on the information that is there. So first thing is that dilation. Remember the dilation, you're looking right here at the A value. So the A value, that dilation, since that is four, you're gonna have a vertical stretch, and we'll just abbreviate that VS, vertical stretch of by four. And that is your vertical stretch, your dilation. Now the reflection, this A value is positive, so there is none. Now the vertical shift, remember the vertical shift is going to be, you're gonna look at these, um, or the horizontal shift, sorry, you're gonna look at the H value. And that each value, remember, you have to go the opposite side. Since that's plus three, you're going to go left three. 
and then the vertical shift. The vertical shift is going to be the K value right there. That's going to be your vertical shift. And that, since that is negative, you are going to write down 6. So that's how you do example 5A. And then for B, well, again, when you take a look at that, the dilation on that one, we're going to look at that A value. That A value is negative. So that is going to be... Uh, when you have a negative one or a positive one. This is where, where it's a little bit tricky. Even though that A value is negative and it's negative one, there is going to be no dilation, or you could write none. Now let's take a look at the reflection. The reflection, since we do have a negative value for the A value, that's going to be over the x-axis. So that one is going to reflect over the x-axis. And then again, that horizontal shift is going to be the opposite of the sign that's in there. So that's negative three. So we are going to move to the right. Three. And then the vertical shift, that last piece is going to go with the K value, which, huh, again, we've got down six. All right. So that would move down six. So that is it. This is all of the information you need to know about graphing absolute value equations and inequalities. Thank you all so much for watching. Also a little bit of bonus time with some Desmos in there. So Desmos is going to be your friend throughout the year. So be sure to become very, very, very familiar with that. And as always, practice makes perfect. All right. Or practice makes you get a lot more things right. Consistent, regular practice with thoughtful, uninterrupted moments will get you there. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make it a great day as always. Peace out.